Welcome to the We Out Here show. Make sure to use hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer helps stop the virus. The virus. The virus. The virus. Wear a mask or take it off. Pick one. You're either putting a mask on or either taking a mask off. But why do we never talk about people not wiping their butts? Yeah! Do you guys wear your mask like this? Do you think we should talk about people wiping their butts more or what do you think? Welcome to the We Out Here MMA, not podcast, but show, but now podcast, podcast. not on Spotify, my fault last yes. week. <laughs> yeah. Dude, everybody, Soon I though. had people Soon. DMing me like, hey, I can't find the link for Spotify. I was like, shit, I don't, I don't, I, 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 and then I deleted their thing and I blocked them on Instagram so they can never <laughs> message me again. Within hey, two episodes, we're going to have it on Spotify. Within yeah. two. And guys, we're going to have new art, and then we're also going to be uh, one of us is being replaced by another Jamaican that's joining Who's us. Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? The guy Comment from below on who do you guys want to be replaced. Right here. And if you, whoever gets the highest vote actually gets to stay in the other two. <laughs> and that's, that's the fucking game we play here because this is the We Out Here, yeah. here not podcast, but show. Guys, I'm here with my wonderful co host. That's Alex. Look at that juicy face. A you see that booger? AKA. Oh hey, shit, that's we, a big hey, one. Hey, can well, let me pick that. that. Hey, pick that on air. Pick that on air. <laughs> hey, can we, yeah. I love how he doesn't have like Kleenex or toilet paper. He gets full on fucking paper towels. Okay. I can't believe we're doing this live. This is great. This is good. All right, guys, that's Lift Guide. Also, I'm here with my other co host. His name is Nick the Ear, wearing his extra small yellow shirt, as usual, showing off the lats, the trat, and guess what? The stash. Uh, my husbands, how are you guys doing today? Good. How are you? Is this shirt too tight? <laughs> Look at him, he's self conscious. Am I getting too fat? What's up? Or do you th- are you making gains or you're getting too fat? Which one? I don't know. I'm putting on some I'm putting on some belly weight. I'll tell you that right now. I'm getting a little All right. We're gonna go we're gonna go start chubs. with you first, then we'll go to Alex. Name everything you ate today. Go. Uh I had an acai bowl. Um, where? and a bunch of Korean barbecue. Acai bar on Hill in Washington in Pasadena, one of the best acai places you could ever go to. I love that place. We've, we've been there, right? Yeah, very there? good. Very delicious. Yeah, what, what Ooh, very friendly was. owners. All right, so Nick ate Korean barbecue, acai bowl, making some gains. Alex, what'd you eat today? Um, so I woke up this morning about seven ten. Got up. <laughs> what? It's, it's so funny. Yeah. Nick's like, I ate this and this. Alex, like, all right. So my mom gave birth to me in nineteen eighty five. It was a C section. The daughter almost cut me with a scalpel. <laughs> Go ahead. Actually, ninety three. Um, woke up, brushed Ooh. my teeth, put on some clothes. I showered last night so I could sleep in a little bit more this morning. Cool. <laughs> tight, Gil, tight, bro, tight, how tight. are we supposed to do these bits when you keep laughing, bro? Like, chill. <laughs> Damn. Bad, but anyway, bad. so I go to Simi Valley three days a week. So I drove her, texted Brooke because I was about to be a little late because I had to stop and get gas. Um, I got there. She's like, how are you feeling for breakfast? I'm like, oh, whatever you want. So she's like, how about I cook up, whip up some eggs and some bacon? Would you like some toast? I was like, yeah, you know, white toast kind of sounds good. She's like, I might have sourdough, but we do have white. So she was like, actually, we do have white and it's brioche. I was like, dude, hook it up. So <laughs> Gil, keep going, keep going. Yeah. And what then so basically... <laughs> I enjoyed that smorgasbord, uh, went home and then I relaxed for a little bit and I was looking at Postmates, it was like, hey, play this game. So I played a game, got five bucks off of any order that was 20 bucks. So basically what I did is I looked at El Pollo Loco, I was like, hey, this could be healthy. So, so I ordered a three piece, <laughs> three piece chicken um, with a side of broccoli, mac and cheese. And you know, I washed it down with a couple churros, Aha. but that's Aha. because I was about to go work out. So I did and went and worked out and then for dinner, Driving home, McDonald's was right there. They had orange lava blast. You know, I had to stop by and get one. Then they had this new chicken sandwich, so I got that with a stop large fry and you know that. <sighs> hey, what, what are ate. you drinking, Gil? Why is that? Why is that can so small? I bought it for oh, okay, blue bottle coffee, but she didn't drink it. Why uh, are you drinking coffee at nine o'clock at night? Well, let me start off my day. So I woke up at seven o'clock and I was like, "Oh man, the chickens are making sounds. I gotta go feed them. The feeds. Look, man." <laughs> Guys, we had a big card this weekend. We also had a live stream, a watch party with some of our closest 60 friends, a new record yeah. on the We Out here, YouTube. We had a couple of friends drop by. We had Pat Riley drop by. We'll probably see him here again. We also had Vincent, a mix, uh, Mexican martial arts, stop by. Uh, so anytime he leaves his stream, guys, know that he's coming to ours. So this is the real place to be. All right. Ooh. When you anytime see he goes leave, to the bathroom. 
It's a party. It's team fun. It's team fun he's at. Uh, UFC 259, guys. Uh, main event, Jan Blachowicz. The real champ. Hovish. Defeated Israel Adesanya. Adesanya. Guys, the Polish power and style bender. Uh, Alex, what are your general thoughts from that? Did Because uh, you had Jan actually winning. So did you see it play out the way you did? Or were you actually kind of surprised that it was that kind of close, actually, until the uh, takedowns? No, I, honestly, it was either for me, it was either he was going to knock him out or he was going to win a decision by like like grappling and kind of doing that shit. I didn't know. I didn't think he was going to be like, just hold him on the floor and hit him. I thought it was going to be more grappling, like holding him against the fence and shit, which he kind of did. But I'm not really surprised. Like, I, I thought he would win because of that size difference, especially when Izzy said he wasn't going to try to put on absolutely any weight. Um, the, the big thing for me with that is when Max talks about going up to lightweight. He didn't want to put on any weight because he knew he was going to have to go back down yeah. to 145. So and then you saw how like outsized he was against Dustin where his just his punches weren't really doing shit. You know, he just wasn't doing that. So at that point, I was just like, I think Jan is just going to be beat too big, too big for him, too strong if they were going to be able to get to the grappling. And then he was. So I wasn't surprised. I thought he was going to win. I don't think he uh, I, th- I think two judges gave him. Two ten eights or was it just one ten eight? Yeah, it was, was round it was four and out five. A bit. It was round four and uh, five. I think it was ten eight, which was a little crazy in my opinion. Um, yeah, see, for me, honestly, like I don't know about ten eight. I think I think Jan was gonna. I think Jan should have won. I don't think it should have been as like deep of a, as a decision as it was. Like it should have been like forty nine forty eight. I think or some shit like yeah. that. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I think the right person won. But I wasn't surprised. I was. I, Actually, I was surprised because I had a feeling like in my head, I was like, Izzy should win this fight. But like I told you guys, I had this gut feeling that Jan was going to pull it off. So that's cool. Yeah. Nick, uh, I mean, we both had uh, Style Bender taking mm-hmm. this win. Uh, watching the fight, if you can just remember, where were things that you were seeing happening? Because he was setting traps on, uh, on early uh, in the fight. Like during the fight, were you like, why is he not doing this? Why is he not doing this? Or was it really just a takedown? You're like, he just can't stop it. You know, what? I had a feeling going into the fight, like I'm a big Izzy fan. I'm a huge Izzy fan. So I, I was going to go for him anyway, but I did have a feeling that this dude wasn't going to win <laughs> just because like what Alex said, the size difference. Cause generally when guys move up, they don't really have that much success unless they have a really hard time making their, their current weight class, you know, like Izzy doesn't really have that hard of a time making 185. So um, I was worried about the size difference. And then when you see him matched up, he, it was uh, it was significant. Um, he might have bit off a little bit more than he could chew, but I thought it was going to be like a slower pace fight. I thought it was going to be a little more technical. I thought like they weren't going to be trading as much as we thought. Like I thought it was going to be similar to the Yo Romero fight. Um, but, you know, I just think Jan just came to fight, man. Like he... He, he was biting a little bit to the uh, the feints. feints, but I don't think Adesanya could, like, he couldn't Just, land clean, you know? Uh, Jan was able to block a lot of the shots. So I think that was the story of the fight. But it was real close. I think it was like 3-2. I think it was 3-2. The mm-hmm. right guy won. Jan looked good. Um, and even the, the, the rounds that were won by uh, Izzy, weren't by big margins either it wasn't that big the biggest margins that were won were definitely in the fourth and fifth round by far so i think uh size plays a big difference and as good as izzy is on paper i do think he's a much better striker than jan i think he's he has more tools in the toolbox but i think ultimately the size just had the biggest advantage let me uh, let me ask you this uh, question to both of you uh alex you first if Jan did not take down Izzy round four and five. Would the fight have played out differently, or do you still have Jan winning? Honestly, here's my thing, and I saw a bunch of stuff actually talking about this too, which kind of made me feel better about what I was thinking. I honestly think so because I remember we had talked about it while it was going. I was like, man, this commentary is so Izzy bias. Like, of course, yeah. Jan, for me, Jan was landing the whole time, and just nothing was ever said about it. I thought they were landing pretty evenly. Um, I thought he was doing good. Like, uh, Jan was biting on Izzy's feints like really bad, but it was like, he was still blocking a lot of stuff. He was checking a lot of the leg kicks 
anytime that Izzy went up high with a head kick, he blocked it. Um, honestly, I think so. I think I think he might have pulled away with the win still. Um, nice. I think he would have. But yeah, well, I just want to say two things. Well, that was one of them. Was I thought Jan was doing really well, even though he was biting on shit so hard because Izzy's. Izzy has like the best feints that I probably have ever seen, right? He makes people do shit that you're like, holy fuck. But uh, Izzy, Yon was blocking pretty well. But the, the size difference, it's not like all these other weight classes that people do. It's uh, 10 pound jumps, right? 35 to 45. And Connor's 55 or 45 to 50, or 55, right? It's 10 pound jumps. 85 to 205 is more than 10 pounds. It's a whole extra 15. I know it's only five pounds, but it's still five pounds that you have to cut. And I mean, like even with DC, DC went up to heavyweight, but DC fought heavyweight all up until he went to UFC just because Kane was fighting at heavyweight. So yeah, that's, that was my thing. It was like, bro, Jan's going to be a lot bigger than Izzy, bro. He's going to be a lot bigger. Um, but yeah, uh, I think I honestly, I think he probably would have pulled away with the fight still. I think the fight was just going to be like that. Um, but if it was stand up, I thought it could have been a lot closer. And if they would have gave it to Izzy, I probably wouldn't have been mad either. Yeah. What do you think, Nick? Do you think that uh, if it just stayed on the, the feet, do you think uh, Israel would have had enough time to have figured that out and maybe land some of those shots? Because he was landing a little bit. A lot of it was eating uh, some blocks. But uh, do you think those two rounds, no takedowns, Izzy could have pulled away or Jan still had the advantage all the way through? I think so. I think it's 50 50, right? I think the biggest strike that was landed in the whole fight was landed by Izzy, especially Sandy. It was that when he hit uh, through that right? left hook, he threw that left hook, caught it behind the ear, you know? And I didn't think, I really was like, I had a hard time thinking that Izzy was going to finish him standing. But there was, in, in my mind, I was like, I think he, he'll be able to, but I really don't see it happening just because of the size difference. And he'd have to really give up a lot. And also, too, Jan was fighting in a different style. He kind of was a little more careful, a little more uh, laid back, or a little more more calculated, I should say. Because usually when you see him fight, he's marching guys down and he's just yeah. picking them apart. So, um, yeah, man, I, I don't know. 50-50. I think, it, I think it's too hard to say. But when you're worried about takedowns, it's a lot harder to get in your rhythm. You know, and yeah. the fact that Jan was able to get in on those takedowns because we haven't seen anyone really do that to Izzy either. He's yeah. been he has really great hips, and he's usually able to, especially out in the middle of the octagon. Usually, it's off the cage. Yeah, but the fact that he was able to level change, it, it kind of shows how the size. I think the size played another advantage there too. So, and and I think when you have a guy that's a lot bigger, at least twenty pounds bigger, right? and a little bit more physically strong. I feel like um, if all sizes were equal, I think Izzy has a better shot. But I think if you're going to move up to 205 Pack and you have that, you yeah, you got to take at least a year to probably put on some weight and get mm-hmm. acclimated to that weight, I think. It, you can't just play that game because I think Izzy is just a little too undersized. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hit up that uh, Alex, uh, That's- you ate in a day diet. <laughs> That's going to be interesting to me to see because Izzy, like what speak on what Nick was saying, like he got when he got taken down, it was in the middle of the octagon. Yeah. Like Izzy, to no me, wall. every time yeah. he's been talking about taken down or attempted to be taken down, he's always against the fence. And he's so good at using that fence to get up. You know, he's super long and shit like that. So it's going to be interesting to see if middleweights try to kind of do that. But again, I mean, it's also Jan is a fucking big ass motherfucker. He's bro. a big ass boy. <laughs> so he's a big he, ass boy. Uh, when he shot on him, you could see just like the power just going through Izzy. Yeah. Just there was like no this. stop. So, there was yeah, no stop. So. It was a blast double. Hey, and I've, I've never seen Izzy get blast hey, double before. Is Jan so, a problem? Oh, he a problem, bro. Hey, that dude is real deal. I, I, I like we talked about on the stream. I really did want to see Jan fight John Jones. I, that was I thought that's a I very wanted that too fight before Izzy, yeah. Because but, out uh, of all the guys, he does look pretty dangerous. But who knows what would have happened? But it's just still uh, a fun matchup, I think. Yeah, guys. So Izzy obviously take the loss, but honestly, I think we all watched the press conference, heard his comments. Yeah. He probably took the loss the best way possible. Uh, and Jan is hey, such a likable guy, man. You mm-hmm. hear him talking. You hear the inter- you guys. You guys see the interaction. Yeah, but did you hear about him? the allegations about him being a bodyguard? <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> no, you, you see the clip of them. I chatting did, in but the why did you wink at me, bro? 
Um, segway, segway. Morning news. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So we have, uh, we have, uh, so like basically Izzy uh, took the loss. He basically said, I'm going to go to uh, 185. You've also had comments from Alex's favorite fighter, John Jones, saying, good, I don't have to think about that fight anymore. And I don't know if we need to see that right now. Maybe down the line, maybe. But I don't think that's going to ever happen. I think it's gone. I think Ariel Hawani was correct. If you were going to make the John Jones-Izzy fight, it had to be right now because of this very reason. Um, so, which brings me to my next thing is, what do we do with Izzy next? He's going to be at 185. Give me his next two fights right now. Uh, Nick, go first. Uh, winner of Marvin and Darren Till. And which then... She obviously, which she obviously wants Darren Till, but we don't know. Yeah, and then, and then maybe, depending the fight with Robert Whitaker and Costa, he wants I think him. he's... Yeah, it's going to be one of them. Or he says, fuck that. And he goes, I'm going to jump to 205 and really make the 205 move. Yeah. He's got to rain for a set. I think I think he needs to get a couple. But it, but it's at 185, it's like there has to be some really impressive performances, right? There has to be something that, that pulls him back in. Because right now it's like we can think, well, pro- whoever wins these matchups, you'll Stylebender is going to be the heavy favorite going into 185. 185 is his division. Not and I don't Kevin really Holland, see baby. Not Kevin, Kevin Holland. Holland. Yeah. He, Kevin Holland for sure. But you still got to give the heavy favorite to Israel. I'm not saying Kevin Holland can't beat him, but going into that fight, you Kevin, just did uh, uh, Izzy, that Kevin Holland tight shirt. Just said you can't beat Izzy. Come on, dude. That's not what I said. Yeah. Uh, Alex, Alex, what are his, uh, Israel at this on this on his next two fights at this one. Yeah. I think the winner of Marvin Vittori and Darren Till, because remember he 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 beat Marvin Vittori in a split decision, and there is people that think that Marvin Vittori won that fight. Uh, Alex, Alex Acosta thought that. Yes, as of no. last week. As of last week. <laughs> as of last week, I really, I really think he was. It would have been Marvin Thway. No, but it was. Marvin I remember. <laughs> I remember watching that fight live, and I was like, "Ooh, I don't know who they're gonna give this to." Um, they gave it to Izzy. It was a split. It was a close fight, but I think uh, I think that's more interesting to me than Darren Till. I, honestly, I think Izzy just piece up pieces up Darren Till like that's bad for some reason. That's why I guess. But then other than that, honestly, I think I know Costa and Whitaker are fighting, and it's one and two. But I think if Kevin Holland beats Brunson, I think he'll get the shot before them to be oh, straight yeah, up with cool. you. Uh, that'd be cool. I, I, yeah, I still think we're like, basically the same thing you guys said. I think we're going to see a Vittori fight next, honestly. Unfortunately, unfortunately for Izzy because he does. Oh, so you're saying him. Till's going to lose? Wow. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't like his accent ah. anymore because Nick ruined it for me. Uh, I don't fucking tap. Yeah. Uh, and then <laughs> I think we're going to get, uh, I think if for a money fight, you're probably going to make more money if Costa. Uh, wins again you're gonna at least have more story than the robert whitaker now that we need to see yeah. it again but in terms to see of if he was movie, actually drunk yeah because that, that'll be a think about the press conference for that it'll be what fun. if he gets drunk yeah. again <laughs> dude, he gets he has that fun trolling that's fun for izzy to just troll this dude the whole time Man, that's press. true uh but yeah guys and then for uh jan i think we know that uh glover to is probably most likely mm-hmm. next but jan said he wants to sit mm-hmm. out for six months almost half a year we'll see if the ufc even allows that but uh i think they should yeah. he did just fight he fought pretty recently between these two fights so yeah. i think it yeah. warrants him a little bit of a break i think so but yeah i think uh everything is set back to normal no crazy super fights coming up everyone's back in their divisions and uh moving on all right our co main event we had the uh goat the female goat amanda nunez Yo, she wrecked our girl, Megan Anderson. Although I will say, Megan Anderson looks like she can break every single human being on this world. That girl looked tall. She looks like a warrior. A warrior. She's straight up Xena, the warrior princess. Uh, But yeah, Amanda Nunes went uh, two, a pop, and then went, I don't like normal triangles. I like doing everything in Inception. Boom, reverse. (laughs) Ten. fucking tapped her out uh crazy yeah. uh, she's a big t- mo- a fan of the tenant though she's a huge fan of it she always tweeting we, about can it can we start calling that the tenant uh the tenant yeah. jokes the tenant the jokes yeah. uh look 145 i don't think there's anyone there right now they're not gonna close the division until amanda obviously decides she doesn't want to go back up there so we have to look to 135 um julia uh holly Holm is out so we have julia pena trying to fight for that spot but i think nunez said uh, i'm good Fight Jermaine. Fight Jermaine. That's what she said? Yeah, she's like, wow. ah, Jermaine's there to fight people. 
So I was like, oh, Amanda wants to be like, no, you come to me now. I'm not going to just find anyone. Come to me. Like, impress me. Everyone's doing the whole impress me. Well, I mean, it kind of makes sense. Juliana Pena won. I mean, she lost her last fight before the last fight she just won. So she's not on a she's not on a streak that warrants. Yeah. That, so so Alex, she's like, I mean, you look. Sorry. You have a lot of dis- you have a lot of disdain for that. So what do you think? Play matchmaker right now. Who do you give Amanda Nunes, or do you make her fight her wife for the child custody? Yeah, that's good. Mm. You fight Nina Asaroff for the child. Yeah. Hey, Nina has a good a big fight coming up too with uh, Mackenzie Dern. To be straight up, so oh yeah, Dern? that's right, that's crazy. Yeah. I like Mackenzie in that still. Yeah. I don't know, bro. Like, ah. man, you, 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 you don't retire? like you don't. Does she retire? She Alex Honestly, doesn't like Mackenzie Dern. No, I do. I do. I just. <laughs> he saw me answer that. His pitch went up higher. He went. No, oh. I do. No, I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, honestly, here's here's the thing. I think I think here's for the, the UFC. To be straight up, I think for the UFC, it'd be better if Amanda retired. <laughs> why, why? Wait, that's, I mean, how is that? First of all, how is that better for the UFC? Because, like, they can't build anybody up right now because she's going to smash absolutely everybody that fights her. So you think let so her retire or do you let her just maybe chill for a second and create some more buzz in the divisions? Hmm. I mean, I guess you can, but she's beating absolutely everybody in this division. That's true. I mean, we said the same there's thing. No about one, Rousey. There's no one. We said the same thing about Rousey. No, but Rousey's different. Out. Rousey was Rousey was only a grappler, though, bro. Amanda has absolutely everything. She's a grappler. She's a striker. She has knockout power. She has submissions. She has cardio. It's like no one's beating her unless it's unless it's Valentina. And they were saying if Valentina beats Jessica Andrade and they do that fight at one thirty five, that's the cool fight because I thought Valentina won the second fight. Mm. Um, but other than that, th- she's gonna beat everybody else. Juliana Pena is gonna get beat by Amanda Nunes. Yeah. Easy. Great shoulders. Like, though. She- really broad. <laughs> She beats everybody in that division. No one's gonna beat her. Like I said last time, she will, she will not lose another fight and and then she, and before she retires. I don't know why I couldn't say that, but yeah, it's like yeah. almost like you didn't believe what you just said. Uh, I'm throw a question to you. Who do you think? Uh, who do you think the UFC gives a matter next? Or what do you think she should do as a fighter? Should she fight uh, Wanda Maximoff? Do some chaos magic? What do you think? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, the only person that she should fight. Is the Scarlet Witch? Um, nah, man. I, I don't know, dude. I don't know. Like, I think you have to look outside the UFC at this point. Like, Gabby you have to look Garcia? at Kayla Harrison. Yeah, honestly, I would love to see her fight Gabby Garcia. <laughs> Do you think Gabby Garcia only erect? She beats the block off Gabby Garcia. No, no. no here's be, the thing. And, Gabby and Garcia fun. is kind of like she. She can get you on the ground. Gabby Garcia knows how to roll. I've watched her. She could roll. But Kenzie I, I, beat her though yeah, in a jiu-jitsu lose. match. She she did. Right. Um, I saw her at the Citadel one time, and hell, she might the be. Mall? Yeah, it's the mall. It's out of the mall at, down our way. She might nice. be one of the biggest people I've ever seen in my life. One of the biggest people I've ever seen. But like Kayla Harrison might be good. Like I would love to see her fight in the UFC, but even though she's like a one fifty five. She is one fifty five, one forty five. But she's uh, a. She is like really good friends with the men in this, and they're like training partners. So I don't know. But, dude, I don't know, man. Like, Amanda Nunes has nothing to prove. Nobody is going to beat her anytime soon, hey, except for she likes Shevchenko. money. She has a family, yeah. buddy. Don't take her no, job for real. her. Yeah, Bro, right. just put her, like, on, like, the the panel or some shit. I know no, she has. She doesn't no, have. I love her. We can't put her on the panel because of the impression you did the other yeah. night. Think about hearing that the whole time. Oh, my God. That's your whore doom. Whore. <laughs> like, I feel like the rest of the division has not caught up to her yet. You know, and it yeah. sucks that she's not a little bit lighter, you know, because I feel like there's way more matchups for her at, like, straw weight than in 125 than there are at 35 and 45, unfortunately. Bro, the 115 yeah. girls, if those, those girls were bigger, there's a lot of matchups there for her. Like, imagine if Rose Namayumas was 135. That'd be a great fucking fight. You know? Come on. Yeah, or Joanna. Like, that would be an amazing fight. But you get what I'm saying now, right? When I say that, it'd be better for the UFC if she retired. It's not better because then they... It would. They lose it one. They lose a champion, right? And then they lose uh, a fighter that's marketable to Brazil. That's like... Yeah, but the whole thing is like... 
that all the the whole rest of the division is good fights against each other. They all can beat each other, la da, da. But just no yeah. one's touching Nunez, so it's gonna get to yeah. the point where everybody's gonna be like, okay, here Nunez is fighting. All right, cool. She's gonna win, so who gives a fuck? You know what I'm saying? Like you would never just, have said that. You would never have said that about Anderson Silva. You kind of let time take his course, and boom, Chris, uh, Chris Weidman shows up and changes everything. Oh, this this is what you do. This is what you do. That's true. Yeah, that's, that's actually very true. Uh, this is what you do. You open a 155 division. Great, more women's divisions. They have yeah, the fire, and then bro. you let and then you let Amanda Nunes be the triple champ because I'm sure there's a lot more mm. people. No, there's not probably not that many people, but you you let her re- roam between 45, 55. Not an idea after that. And then on top of that, or you retire, or Amanda Nunes say Amanda Nunes steps away, then you have Shevchenko fight for 35, 25, and she's double champ and she rules that division. And maybe she even goes up to 45 and says, fuck it. I'll take on all these comers and, and see what happens. And you let Shevchenko be the new face of the women's division. Then as Amanda Nunes say, rides off to, to the say, sunset. They trying to say, oh, they wanted Amanda to come back out of retirement and make this whole storyline. Like you took all the, Maybe that too. Who knows? And then Wanda Maximoff comes off and then she, and then they, Ooh, they, they, they I have an idea. Scarlet Witch too. <laughs> Nunes I have an vision. idea. Go ahead. So what if about what if they do this right after bantamweight they just do women's heavyweight. Listen, but hear me out. Ready? Heavyweight is anything after one thirty five weight class. So it can be forty five ers, fifty five or just like how they have heavyweight where it's two oh seven to two sixty six. Yeah, you know they have that big weight thing. Just have Gabby that Garcia. after have that after bantamweight. Then they can have a lot of big girls and shit like that just come in and fight. Then that opens up where you can bring all these girls in. Kayla Harrison, Gabby Garcia, you know, all that, all the big girls and shit. Gabby Garcia. But you could do that. And then she could have a whole fucking bunch of people to fight. You know what I'm saying? So, dude. Bro, look at all the chicks that Gabby Garcia is. You can't have this woman kill another female in the UFC. But I, hey, I still, striking's not that good though. I her still grappling, think, she can sit on people and basically choke them out. I still think Amanda Nunes gives her the business. I think Amanda really? Nunes knocks her out. Yeah. Wow. You guys weren't saying that when she fought Cyborg. You guys were all talking about Cyborg. The um. Time. Actually, no, I didn't. I predicted a first round knockout by Amanda. The one fight I should have actually bet on, and it happened. I would have made so much money, and I didn't bet on it. It's funny. The one fight you did ask people to bet on was Dominic Reyes being. <laughs> Fuck you. All right, guys. Hey, he should have won uh, though. He should have won though. Let's be real. You know who should have won is fucking Jan if he didn't throw an illegal <laughs> knee when he was coasting to a win. Guess someone doesn't understand English or the rules. Fuck your corner. <laughs> hey, uh, Alderman Sterling wins the championship via DQ, which I still think is weird, but it makes sense. Um, due to uh, being a legal leak, knee to the face by... Yawn. But there's new reports saying currently that actually it was actually a clean shot. Do you guys think all that stuff? It's not. All those no pictures that they're showing. That, no, no. There's actually look, look a how, picture. Look. See, everyone's saying that knee actually. See how there's a shadow? People are saying that knee is actually floating. Apparently, it has to bear weight. No, no. Listen, listen. Right? Look where the knee's at right now. Zoom out a little bit. The oh, knee's already the, off the, the face. Elbow? What do you want? No, 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 no. Go, go to the knee. For real, though. For real. His knee is off the ground because the his knee, knee no. is lifting his whole body off the ground. No, but that's what I'm saying. Look, <laughs> Jan's knee is already past his face. The, he's off the floor after he got hit. I saw the other pictures, too, and that they were trying to show, look, he's off the floor. Each picture they had, the knee isn't even by Aldermain's face anymore. I'm like, yeah, this, this is after he got fucking hit with the knee. All right. It's I'll so be crazy, honest. Bro. I... I was just digging a bit. I didn't know there was actually stuff where people were complaining. No, about there's it. actually there's, there's illegal. Actu- no, there's legal actually knee. people complaining about it. I it's saw so knee. many posts about it. Like, oh, look at these. Look at his knees are off the floor. And every picture they had of it is I'm like this after the fucking knee. What are you guys talking about? Also, it doesn't matter because the intent was we all Aljo was it was cleared that he was on the ground. So I don't know who those people are saying. Um, guys, what the heck was up with that? Uh, I mean, Jan, what's going on, my man? Uh, I think let's just uh, let's just move on to our we out here morning. What? Welcome uh, to the we out here morning news show, and that is a Russian accent.
<laughs> no, that's brought to you by Hihachi Mamashima from Tekken. Yes! <laughs> Thank hey, you shit. for the say and the yes and an improv. Guys, <laughs> MMA Morning News, we were just talking about in our fight recap, no cap. We were talking about uh, Aljamain Sterling winning via DQ, via the <clears throat> uh, illegal knee on the ground. So that puts Jan and uh, Aljamain kind of like in a, um, how you say, a situation. Uh, after the fight, uh, Aljamain Sterling was posting pictures of him with the belt with his team, and then... Peter Yan responded with this meme. I'm going to pull it up right now. I won't accept the belt this way. Five minutes later, boom, pretty good meme. And then Aljamain responded with, I didn't know he was down. I'm going to fake apology now <laughs> with some broken <laughs> Russian English. What do you make of this, guys? What do you I... make of this? Does this play too much into – I believe Aljamain Sterling uh, spoke in a uh, – I don't know if he wrote about it, but he told me, he said that his family, his girlfriend. On his weekly Scraps podcast, yeah. Yeah, he talked about like, you know what? I was down, but my family said, you know what? Hold the belt up. You deserve it. You're a champion. You won. Whether it's, you like it or not, be proud. You won. So what do you guys make of all this back and forth with these two guys? Who, who's, that, who's more cringe right now in the moment? Who do you think? Uh, I don't think any are cringe, to be honest, but who I can bad? see... Uh, I it's think, like I, I understand. Aljo, dude. Aljo looks bad, but I think that it's like it looks bad. Be I don't think he intended it to look bad. When you listen to his podcast, and like I can understand it, right? He got he gets home with it. He has all these people flying in and all this shit like that. I mean, he has the fucking belt right there. I'm sure. And you, there's a video of him when they're telling him, "Oh, take out the belt, take out the belt." So he's like, "Okay." And then he unzips the belt, and then they have him put it on his shoulder to take the picture. I understand that shit. I mean, he technically has a fucking bell, right? Yeah. So it's like, I understand you flew all these people in there, but it does look bad when you did say all this shit, you threw the belt down. I mean, I understand why people are taking it. Like, what the fuck? You just said you didn't want this shit. But then again, it's just like, we got to that scene, that whole scene, we only got a picture. We didn't see what led up to exactly the belt and shit, yeah, you know, them true. asking that's him true. to take the picture and shit like that. We didn't see any of that. That so, Aljamain did not like openly like, oh, here's me and my belt. This was clearly from a, someone else's camera. Yeah, someone like, else's a post pri a private, too. A private moment he wasn't trying to make public, I'm mm -hmm. sure. It wasn't so, even him that posted it. It was somebody else that posted that picture. It was Murrah. You know, <laughs> I would yeah, yell at that person. Yeah, I would yell at that person. Uh, so Nick, here's my thing too. The only thing I saw, I, I saw that stuff too. And I was like, yeah, it is what it is, bro. It's like he, he got the W at the end of the day, technically. But the one thing I did see, but I couldn't, when I start, started to search for it, I couldn't really find the story anymore. But there was a post apparently of, I don't know who posted it. I don't know where it was from, but it was from Aljo saying like, oh, I want the fight with uh, Henry, oh, yeah, Henry now. Let's skip Jan. I think- I, I heard that was a joke because he posted a picture with Henry. Mm -hmm. mm, so it was a bit. I think it was a bit. I think it was more. Yeah, they, a, a see, that, yeah it was a funny what, thing. Because mm -hmm. that was the thing. It's like if he was being serious. Because I, I didn't feel like I was like. There's no way he he, he really feels that way, right? He wants to run. Okay, back. good. Because if he if he was if he wasn't joking, then it's yeah. like all right, bro. Let's relax. Let's, let's be dude. real here. But um, yeah, dude, it's a real life. messy situation, dog. Like it sucks because I feel like. It's all the news outlets are reporting like, oh, yeah, Aljo is faking. A lot of people, it sucks because a lot of people are like, he was being, he, a lot of the comments are very negative, right? Everyone's like, oh, he got, the, he, he deserves an Oscar, yada, yada, yada. Sure. When I read that from people that are just random Instagrammers or whatever the fuck, then I'm like, okay, people don't really understand the nature of it. But then when I see other fighters talk about it, that's when I'm like, hmm, I wonder if there's any merit to that. But our with next that being piece said, of news is TJ Dillashaw <laughs> commenting dang. on Al Jermaine Sterling. Hey, bro, I was gonna wrap it up. All right, Jesus no, wait, Christ. No, but you're leading to that, right? I think you were transitioning. Kinda, me. Uh, kinda. Go ahead, go off with it. Go wait, ahead. finish it. I thought you were trying to volunteer. No, no, no. Go. We're talking about TJ Dillashaw now. Well, my thought Nick was trying to <laughs> do one of these to me, but clearly I read the situation <laughs> wrong. Uh, I, we'll get back to what you you want to say. What you were gonna say, really quick. No, 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 go with TJ, go with TJ. That's uh, better. Basically, uh, Nick was saying other fighters were calling out uh, Aljo for the same thing. So I thought Nick was saying, oh, TJ <laughs> decided to get in the party. Understandably, TJ's probably upset because basically they're going to have to wait for this fight to happen again and some of the other- Fucking uh, TJ, dude. Fights. But guess what? <laughs> Fucking wait, you loser. Uh, <laughs> TJ Dillashaw, 
uh, tweeted, and the Oscar goes to, oh, let me share it with you guys, sorry. Uh, the Oscar goes to bah, 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 Fake Master for Best Actor in a Title, which is funny because he tagged someone that doesn't even have an account called Fake Master. What a loser. <laughs> doesn't understand how social media works. For Best Actor in a Title Fight, and P- uh, Peter Jan needs a crash course in the rules of the sports he was once champion in. Hey, Peter, now you're a cheater too, bitch. Which is okay. First of all, a lot of things. We we'll go to Algerman. You cheated your entire UFC career, and you have the balls to call someone an actor. You lost your manhood when you decided to inject yourself so that you uh, so that you can actually compete. I hope Sanhagen, Sanhagen, tools Sanhagen. like tools like he did you in a practice before. First of all, TJ, what are you doing? TJ, Back you got to be quiet, bro. You can't say hey, nothing. TJ, you called Yana. You're a cheater too, bitch. You're basically just confirming you're a cheater. Weird way to phrase that. <laughs> and second, you cheater. Shut up. Hey, uh, hold on here. I want to say something about this, though. Cody had the best book, clap back. To who? Aljamain? To, to uh, TJ Dillashaw. TJ. <laughs> oh, I, I, didn't even, I didn't even see what he said. Yeah. Um, keep, keep talking. What were you going to say, Alex? Um, bad. Um, I personally, I don't think... Uh, Jan did it purposely. I don't think yeah. so. Yeah, I don't so think did. so. Um, of course he did. And if he did, it was just an illegal strike. Uh, he, I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't consider him a cheater. You know, if if he, if if that was part of their game plan, like, hey, let's get him to both of his fucking knees down and knee him in the fucking face to win this <laughs> Sick fight. Coach, I love that coach. Yeah, I mean, then yeah, but I mean, there's one cheater in that division, and it's fucking TJ Dillashaw. Yeah, you you took you took a steroid to help you beat these people, like a a very high steroid that helps you with conditioning. It helps you with red blood cell count, so you can recover faster. Like that's the worst drug you can take in a sport like this, and you were taking it, and you were knowingly taking it so you can have an edge on people. So I don't want to hear that. I wish I wish the UFC would just not let him fight in the UFC no more. Like that is such like a like you know he admitted to it so I'm like why even let this guy fight in this fucking federation is beyond me but hey yeah. all I know is that I think Peter Yan beats the shit out of TJ and I think uh, Aljamain Sterling though Aljamain Sterling needs to get his cardio a little better because I was pretty surprised on his conditioning on that fight yeah uh, he still needs to he still has to beat him because like, yeah. no, he, he, he was losing that, he was that's losing. a tough fight bro because even when Aljamain was at his best he wasn't landing the better shots on Peter Yan. Mm-hmm. Peter Yan, when Peter Yan landed shots, there was a big difference. When mm-hmm. when Aljo landed shots on Peter Yan, yeah, he, he was taking them. He was eating some. But just the way the fight was going, like that it, fight it, to it me would be bad for Aljo, I think. If, if say if Aljo had that can keep that conditioning the whole round, like how he did the first round, which he looked good in, if he can keep that conditioning the whole fight, he, they are both just going to have to hope that they have judges that lean on their sides in the sense of, are they going to have judges that, went, well, he landed more significant strikes, so he obviously won the round, or they're going to have a judge where, I know I know he landed more, but look at Peter Yan's strikes just did so much more damage to him when he so landed. Much more, so much um, more. It was different quality over I, quantity, for sure. I rewatched mm-hmm. the fight, and it was like, the first round, Aljo was winning up until the two-minute mark. Mm-hmm. Right when the two minute mark happened, Done. that's when the fight started changing completely. After that, I saw one guy give it the second round to him as well, but I don't know, man. Like it's uh, it, it was rough. But <laughs> Cody Garbrandt <laughs> had the best clap back. Somebody asked him, they said, "Hey, Cody, how do you feel about TJ saying Aljo faked it?" And he says, "Who knows if he did or not? Only Aljo knows. But what we do know." Is that TJ sticks needles as an ass, and not <laughs> and not one part. emoji. He put four <laughs> blood needles. <laughs> and dude, if you get caught for doing EPO, you can't be you can't say anything about what Aljo did. You can't say anything about what Peter Yan did. You can't say shit, dude. And at the very least, you just have to be quiet. Is he a great champion? Yeah, whatever. But at the same time, it's like you gotta just sit down and not say a word because it's very fresh on everyone's brain what TJ got suspended for. But mm-hmm. if we're talking about tweets, the best tweet that I saw was from our boy, Colby Covington. And what he said was, told you virgins, Cheater Pan couldn't hand- handle that Andrew Cuomo pressure from Funkmaster MMA. <laughs> and you. <laughs> That's what he said. Hey, 
Wait, who is he saying that to? I need to find this. Was this Colby Covington said, yeah, he says, told you virgins, cheater pan, couldn't handle that Andrew Cuomo pressure from Funkmaster MMA. Because <laughs> he's from what New a- York. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but is like, that he's also a Democrat, so why is fucking <laughs> Colby Covington? <laughs> Because he's it's hella so Republican. Funny. It's so funny. I, you know what? I like this uh, Colby Covington. That was actually very funny. I did rewatch the laugh. fight too, though, without any noise when I was at the shop the next day. I like, because I think one of the, ju- yeah. the, the, the judges gave it the first two rounds to Aljo. And like after I rewatched it, we watched it twice at the shop because we wanted to see. I was like, I can see how they gave him the first two rounds. I just don't know. I think that he started gassing in the second round and it was just like, I could see how they did it though, but my whole thing for this is they're gonna book this fight immediately. Like, that's what Dana yeah, was saying sure. and shit like that. Um, so Aljo really has to come up with a different game plan because I think he tried that game plan what he did with Sanhagen, and it just didn't work because he wasn't able to take Jan down and he just gassed himself out going Jan so hard. Had an answer for everything, and mm-hmm. and even when when Aljo had his best moments, Jan still had an answer for everything. You know, he dropped yeah. him a couple of times. He dropped him with the calf kick. He dropped him with the with the straight right. He took his back. He was able to handle the the grappling exchanges. So it seemed like Jan had an answer for everything. Like th- there was, there was nothing different. It, it, it just seemed like there was nothing Aljo would have done. And yeah. and and his best. I think Aljo's best weapon is his grappling and his pace. And he wasn't able to implement that that night. So I don't know if it's going to be different on another night, but. I think it's it's a it's an uphill battle for Aljo. I think, and um, I don't know, man. It, it's it's going to be really tough for him. But well, honestly, this adds so much more intrigue. Like we've talked about the one thirty five division, we were already kind of like, damn, it's stacked. This adds yep. so much more drama, so much more storylines. It's a fun yep. division. It's so and then you fun. look at and then you watch Song Yadong and Kyler Phillips fight on the yep. undercard, and those guys looked fucking. That fight looked insane, you know. So it's like Bro. we have all these really talented guys on one thirty five coming up. And the matchups are going to be insane, dude. It's going to be. Bro, insane. I almost want a, like a tournament for that with like pictures. Corey Sanhagen. 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 All right, guys. Uh, that was our news for this evening in the morning. Let's get to our quick pick picks with Lift God and Nick the Ear. We have another card this Saturday. We have the Edwards versus Belil Muhammad fight, uh, who is replacing Hamzat Chamayev. Don't worry, guys. He did not retire. That was a. False negative. What is it called? False positive. Positive, False positive. negative. False positive? Yep. Cool. He was positive. Uh, he was going to he was positive. He was gonna retire, but it was false. It was false. Uh, main event, Leon Edwards back in action after 14 years versus Belil Muhammad. Alex, we'll start with you. What do you got years. for us, my friend? <laughs> I'm gonna rusty? keep it short and simple. I'm gonna keep he it short and simple, though. ready? Just, hey, is he rusty? It's all I want to know. He's gonna be rusty, but here. Even though he has the worst name, worst nickname in UFC history Which as is. Remember the Name. <laughs> it's my least favorite nickname I've ever but heard. Say the whole thing. Say the whole thing. Belial, Remember the Name Muhammad. I just I just wish you could have came up with a different nickname. But aside from that, he's actually really good and he's been active. He just beat a very tall striker. Um... And he's been active. So I honestly think that he is going to win this fight. I think this was the best case scenario for him. This is those, these are those fights that when it comes your way, you just take it. It doesn't fucking matter. And Dana White always says it. We always have these fights. People don't take it, but those are the fights that you need to take. This is going to be a good fight for him because if he wins, he's right up there. He's ranked. He's probably going to not, he's not going to take his spot, but he's probably going to be ranked in the top five. Um, I just think for how active he's been and he's winning, I think Belil is actually going to take this. Yeah, so Alex is going to go with Belil. And you know what's crazy? I think uh, people are talking about like Leon's uh, record, um, but dude, Belil's eight and one. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. In the eight and one, and he's like on a three eight or four and one. winning streak. But say it like with more like gusto. Eight and one. Oh, uh, I don't know what uh, gusto Nick, means, but with he's also eighteen and three though. So in total. Uh, Nick, who do you got? You got your boy um, Leon Edwards, or do you like the nickname of Belial? <laughs> you know what? I do. I really do like Belial. I think he's. I think he's really dope. I do like his nickname. 
I like it. Wow. It's probably one of my it's probably my favorite nickname in the UFC. So <laughs> fuck you, Alex. The controversy. I love it. Yeah. Between nicknames. Nah, but uh Edwards is really good. He's very talented. So I think um it does worry me that he hasn't fought in two years. Like last time he fought was Gunnar Nelson. And that was when he got pieced up by Jorge Masvidal. Um, so, but Edwards is really fucking good, man. He's really good. I think he's, he's ranked in the top five for a good reason. So um, I think it's going to be Edwards decision. He's going to win wow. via decision. I think, uh, I think naturally I would say Edwards. I think I've always said Edwards, but man, Alex just made some really good points. I really like how he's been, uh, Belil has been active. I think that's so important, especially with, I feel like Edwards has everything to lose. There's so much pressure on that. Belil is like, Hey, I'm getting called in to fucking just mess the party up. So I think he's going to come with that carefree, uh, non-pressure fight. He's been active and you know what? I, I like his nickname. Like Nick, I think I like the nickname. It's dope. Because honestly, Leon Edwards, his is Leon Rocky <laughs> Edwards. Yeah, why is Rocky? it Rocky? You know what? I'm going to change my name. Yeah, you're not even I from the Rocky. U.S., bro. Yeah. Whoa. Like, Whoa. That's an, hey, that's, huh? that's an American. On. But you have to agree with me. That's an American. Like when you Rocky plays, bro, there's fucking bald eagles flying around wherever the fuck you're at, bro. Like that is the it's most Italian. American movie. It's a Italian. I, you know what? You're right. I think Leon should have been Leon Anthony Joshua Edwards. That would have been no. Or it said Leon Darren Till Edwards. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good too. All right, guys, we have our co-main event, light heavyweight. We have Misha. I can never say his name. How do you say that? Sirkinov. Misha Sirkinov versus Ryan Span. Uh, Nick, we'll start with you this time. Uh, Ryan Span coming to the loss to Johnny Walker, even though he was like on a 50 fight win streak before that. And he was think? about to win that Johnny Walker fight. Until that yeah. random elbow machine gun happened. Yeah. Uh, Nick, what do you think? I got Sirkanov via submission in the second round. Peruvian necktie, what do you think? Mm, yeah, Peruvian necktie. I'll go with that. Or uh, elbow barrage, just because he knows his weakness. So that's what he's going to go with. But I think I think Merkinov is uh, Merkinov, <laughs> Misha, Misha. That's that's his full name co- combined together. Yeah, Merkinov, Merkinov. Mer- Merkinov. Mer- hey, that's low key kind of tie up. My name Merkinov, homie. I'm gonna murk you. Um, I think I think he's gonna I think he's gonna get the W because Span is good, but I just I think uh, what's Merkinov is pretty solid. But he could get knocked out by Ryan Span. So then again. Oh my God. Ryan Span. Alex, I'm just kidding. No, I got Merkinov. Merkinov. Grappler. Uh, I'm gonna go grappler. Nick's Nick's whole choice is based on racial colorism anyways alex go ahead <laughs> um i'm going to go uh rapan oh he could that's what's better Merkinov or rapan Merkinov or Merkinov, rapan? bro Merkinov is a better name but rapan Rap- pretty cool though a hey, rapan has rapan. submissions too yeah but he's big bro he's six five he has knockout power i think he's gonna knock out misha Shurkinov in the oh, first shit. round Dude, he was beating oh, Johnny shit. Walker. Come on. He was. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Span because I like his combined name better. Rapan. Like Rapan? <laughs> that can also be like a like a really cool product you purchase to clean yeah. stuff. I like Rapan. All right, guys. A recyclable to fan. Our next five. Our boy, I feel like we've been following all through quarantine. Dan Ige. Very Yeah. The hey, mayor. Just let's just skip this. Tucker. We're going we're going D- Dan Ige all day. But what about Gavin Newsom Tucker? Hey, also, one of the best nicknames ever is Dan 50 k e Gay. That's a great fucking nickname. That's a really good nickname. But do you That's know what cool Gavin's nickname. is? Gavin's is Gav Gunnar or the Newfoundland Terror. It's Gavin Tucker. Newsom Tucker. Yep. What do you yeah, guys That's think? pretty good. Uh, guys, Gavin Tucker is on a three-fight win streak, bro. Gavin Tucker's good. <laughs> Nick doesn't understand fighting. I'm going to have to go with Alex. Alex, you going with Tucker? Nope, I'm going with Danny Gay. Let's go. I kind of want to go with Danny Gay too, but just to mix it up, because I think Danny Gay is, he lost a fight, right? His most recent fight. To Cater. To Calvin Cater. And that fight was, you know. Close. It was was a good fight. Yeah, it was a good fight. Like, it was competitive. It wasn't like Calvin Cater ran away with it. He kind of did, but. I don't, he ran, uh, I mean, he got, it was a tough fight. got his face messed up from that. Yeah, but, but Dan Ige clip Calvin Cater with some big shots. And I feel like if you don't have a chin like Calvin Cater, maybe the fight would have been different. You know, so uh, I'm going go to com- Dan combine Dan Ige's name together. Let me see who has the best version. Alex, you first. Dan Gay. Gay. 
Cool. The gay. All at the same time. That's great. The gay. Go ahead, Nick. Dan Gay. Yeah, Alex had a better flow to that. The gay is good. <laughs> he's he's, uh, he's good. We have our flyweight division, 125. We have Matthias Nicolau versus Manel de Progerico Cape. I think they're both Brazilian, actually. Uh, Cape, I think, lost his last fight uh, against uh, Pantoja. That's where I remember him, from the Overeem uh, Volkanov fight. Uh, he lost to Panto- Pantoja, and that was his debut fight. And then we also have Matthias, which I believe he won his last two fights. And he got that Japanese necktie, so that's what's up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you guys see for this one, Nick? We'll start with you. Um, uh, I'm gonna go. Man, Nicolau. I'm gonna go Nicolau. Hey, hey, this is how you know uh, we all don't really know about these fighters because we're just making the exact pick. Um, I'm gonna go Nicolau. Uh, Nicolau. I think he's gonna win by submission. He's a good grappler. I think. Okay. I think Pick my computer's about to die. My computer's about to die. I have Nicol Nicolau. Okay, I'm gonna go with Kape because uh, at least he has one UFC fight. The other guy is uh, coming from a different promotion. Uh, all right, hey, guys. A lot of time we have. Computer. I can't. I can't find the charger. It's missing. Don't even. Right, don't guys. even say who the winners. Uh, who you're, we're picking. All right, guys. The next I'm... fighter, Eric Andre <laughs> versus Darren Stewart. Who do you got? Because it's Eric Andre, I'm going to have to pick Eric Andre. No, I'm going to go Daron Stewart because his daughter surgery is still lingering. So he has to mm-hmm. make that money, baby. Darren now, Stewart. So what do you think? The dentist. I think, Darren, I think Darren Stewart wins. I think Darren Stewart because he's fighting for his daughter and he doesn't even have one. That's the kind of fighter you got to love. When I yep. missed, I got the wrong black father confused with the daughter situation. And I said Darren Stewart had a daughter he was fighting for. Who, who was who was the black father you were thinking of? I forgot who it was, but I confused it with Darren Stewart. So mm, cool. you know what? He does have the passion that he fights for a daughter he has yeah. and needs yeah. surgery. Guys, yeah. those are our fight picks for the evening. I hope that helps you guys. Uh, we love you so much. Follow Alex at Lift God. Follow Nick at Nick the Ear. And also follow us at We Out Here MMA. Uh, don't sleep on us when we have another live show. Those are fun. Those are awesome. And uh, you know what, guys? Help us keep building the show. Why don't you hit subscribe? Help us out. Why don't you hit the notification button? Why don't you leave a couple comments here? Let's do a question. We haven't done a question forever. Alex, what is the question of the week? If you have a choice between bu- uh, double bubble gum, double bubble, uh-huh. bubble gum, or oh. Big League Chew, which mm-hmm. one are you grabbing? Mm-hmm. Ooh, guys, we'll leave you off with that question. Put it down in the comments below, and you may win a pack of gum. We'll see what happens if we can afford it. Peace! Now you can tell like a big clout. I smile so big while you're about. Catch us on Warzone. Now I'm gonna have to show you